welcome to No Cabin Fever today. We welcome Nicholas Ellis from ALLM Works and he will talk about how to easily share portfolio level insights from Structure and Structure Gantt in JIRA fields. Nicholas, hello, I make you the host. Please start sharing. Thank you so much. So uh, hopefully you guys can see my screen here. Um, so yeah, this is just uh, you know structure on the left here and structure.gantt on the right. I've uh, started with just a really, really simple hierarchy. Um, so we've got epics on top and then some stories underneath and uh, some subtasks below them. But we're really just gonna be dealing with the, uh, the epic and the story level here. So as we look on the left, we can see that uh, the epics are being treated as groups. They're these large brackets here. Um, so they're a, basically a, a grouping of all the work underneath them. And then underneath, we can see this plan that we have. We have all the different work, who it's assigned to, some relationships between that work. Um, but the goal here today is to you know, try to pull out these high level insights, try to look at the top level, what's going on and try to you know, take some actionable data from that. Um, and so we can do that uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously that's kind of the point of structure is a way of organizing data and looking at it at a very high level. But sometimes you know, either people don't have access to structure or you know, they want that information available other places uh, in JIRA outside of the tool. Um, and that's where effectors come into play. So what effectors allow us to do is to essentially copy data from one place into a field somewhere else. Um, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, some fields from the Gantt chart. Um, and so we can see over here, uh, it's a little bit collapsed right now, um, but uh, I've got this Gantt start date and Gantt finish date field. Um, and what this is telling me is basically, you know, when the earliest issue underneath this epic is going to be started and when the last issue is going to finish. So this is kind of my plan according to Gantt. Um, but this is a calculated field. So it's only available, you know, inside structure and inside Gantt. Um, but when I use an effector, I can copy it somewhere else and make it available elsewhere in JIRA. So I can just open up my automation, add an effector. And we use this attribute to uh, issue field effector. And I can copy the Gantt start date over to my actual start date field. And then I'll use some JQL to make sure that I'm not doing this for every single issue, but just for the epics, um, you know, in this project. So now I've limited it um, pretty significantly. Now I can, <laughs> and it's yelling at me that I'm putting this in the wrong place. Um, and we'll get to see a preview before we actually run this. Um, so now I'm changing the start date of all these different issues. Um, and let's just apply all here. Shouldn't take too long because we're only dealing with seven issues. Um, and so now, uh, if I add, um, if I actually open up one of these epics to look at it, I can see outside of structure um, that it has the um, start date set. So it's got the start date, uh, and this is when we expect the. Uh, this issue will actually be started. So this is kind of the simplest possible example of, of using effectors. I'm just copying one you know, calculated field into um, another issue, but I just kind of wanted to start off with a simple example. We can do a lot more with it. Um, so what we'll do on the other end of it is instead of just copying this Gantt finish date over directly, we can do some uh, transformation on that using some other information that we have. So I've got this estimated Gantt finish date column and what I'm doing is I'm basically saying, you know, how long are we, are we taking to finish this? So how long from start to finish? And then depending on how long that is, I'm going to add an additional 10% at the end. So um, for every 10 days that we expect this project to go on, I'm gonna add an extra day just to have a little bit of flexibility. Um, and there's a lot that we can do with these formula columns, um, but you know, just wanted to use a, a simple example here. Um, so it's not quite the Gantt finish date, it's just, uh, you know, plus an additional uh, 10%. Um, so I can add another effector and 
copy my estimated Gantt end date over to my due date field. Uh, and again, I want to limit this just to my epics in this project. Um, and it looks like we've got seven issues again, and I'll apply it. So now, or eight issues. <laughs> um, so this is, you know, kind of the idea, you know, we want to take information from structure um, and make it actionable elsewhere. Um, because when you're trying to look at the high level, when you're trying to look at a large project, maybe you don't want to see, you know, the entire Gantt chart and everything going on in there. All you really care about is, you know, when is work going to start? When is work going to end? You know, when am I going to see a return on this investment? When is, uh, you know, this project going to be complete? Um, and this is just a really nice way of, of making that information available, um, you know, somewhere else in or outside of uh, structure. So that way it's easily actionable um, and easy to, uh, to view. This also helps gives insight to the people who are working on it. You know, they'll notice that, um, you know, their projected end date or something or uh, of a particular story that's inside an epic might be outside of that range. And of course, we can update this plan, um, you know, as needed. The other thing that I think is uh, a really nice use case for this is, so here we have, uh, you know, the Gantt chart and I've got the start date of, or sorry, uh, the start date just a, a week ago and then today and we can see that I've got this plan. I think this is how most people uh, think of Gantt. They think of it as a, pl uh, you know, a planning tool. You know, I want to uh, create a roadmap of when issues are going to be done and, and how I'm going to um, schedule out my work. Uh, but I think it can be really powerful in the opposite way. And the other thing that we can do with effectors is we can leverage some of that interesting information in JIRA and then apply it to the Gantt chart. So we can take things like um, the first transition into progress and we can use that as the start date. So as soon as this issue was transitioned into progress, this is when it really started. Um, and then we can also use the resolution date and say, this is when this issue really ended. And then we can look back, um, you know, before today into the past and not see a plan, not see a hypothetical of, of how things are going to play out, but we can see, you know, how the real work was done when it, uh, you know, really started, when it really finished, uh, you know, how much time it actually took. And, and I think it's very useful for that kind of uh, reverse planning aspect. Um, so I can kind of do the same thing. I've got this field uh, here, which is the first transition into progress. Um, and I can create um, another effector and, you know, kind of do the same thing here. I'll do my first transition into progress. Um, and then I can copy that over to my start date. And I'll do that for um, all of the stories and tasks uh, again in this project. And so this one should be quite a few more issues. Yeah, it looks like we've got a longer list here. Um, we'll apply those, yep, 11. Um, and then I can just make a change here quickly over on the Gantt chart slice um, and now I've moved a whole bunch of issues um, to when they were actually um, transitioned into progress um, so now I'm kind of looking back in time seeing how a plan actually um, was executed as opposed to you know trying to look forward and, and predict um, how a plan will actually play out um, but, uh, you know, there's naturally a lot of different applications for, uh, you know, the formula columns, the um, effectors and um, structure and Gantt, but this is just kind of, um, you know, a way that I saw of, you know, bringing them together and, and trying to use them in tandem. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm uh, finished about five minutes early. I guess I'm a little bit of a, a fast talker. Um, when I'm nervous, but um, yeah, I think we can uh, possibly take some questions. Okay, thank you very much. That was really fast and really interesting. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs>
Um, are there any questions from the attendees? You can use the Q&A box or the chat is also open. I think no, currently no questions. Maybe you can show your contact data. Do you have a slide with your contact data if somebody has questions or just go to almworks.com. You will find, I think, Nicholas there via- Yeah, I should be easy to find just on our website, almworks.com. Yes. So thank you very much for the moment. Tomorrow we have how to hire the right people and how to not from Christian Reichert from Resolution. For today, we say bye-bye and see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.